So I think we've heard from people that it is obviously um, it's important that we not just deal with this uh, in the coming few weeks, whatever that might be, but understand that this is the likely course that this will take. Uh, we could see this again in the fall, in the beginning of flu season. Right. Virus, as the president said, right. the first time I believe. And hey. I'm sorry to get screwing this thing up. <laughs> you know, there's a job to do. Please, everybody, have a seat. There's a job to do. You got to do it yourself. See you guys later. Have a good weekend. Uh, this is kind of cool, Robert. It's way cooler than it seems. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the reason I am interrupting. Uh, Robert is not because he's not doing a good job. He's doing an unbelievable job. Uh, but it's because I just got off the telephone with Justice Souter. And so I would like to say a few words about his decision to retire from the Supreme Court. Throughout his two decades on the Supreme Court, Justice Souter has shown what it means to be a fair-minded and independent judge. He came to the bench with no particular ideology. He never sought to promote a political agenda. And he consistently defied labels and rejected absolutes, focusing instead on just one task, reaching a just result in the case that was before him. He approached judging as he approaches life, with a feverish work ethic and a good sense of humor, with integrity, equanimity, and compassion, the hallmark of not just being a good judge, but of being a good person. I am incredibly grateful for his dedicated service. Uh, I told him as much when we spoke. Uh, I spoke on behalf of the American people, thanking him for his service. And I wish him safe travels on his journey home to his beloved New Hampshire and on the road ahead. Now, the process of selecting someone to replace Justice Souter is among my most serious responsibilities as president. So I will seek somebody with a sharp and independent mind and a record of excellence and integrity. I will seek someone who understands that justice isn't about some abstract legal theory or footnote in a case book. It is also about how our laws affect the daily realities of people's lives, whether they can make a living and care for their families, whether they feel safe in their homes and welcome in their own nation. I view that quality of empathy, of understanding and identifying with people's hopes and struggles as an essential ingredient for arriving at just decisions and outcomes. I will seek somebody who is dedicated to the rule of law, who honors our constitutional traditions, who respects the integrity of the judicial process and the appropriate limits of the judicial role. I will seek somebody who shares my respect for constitutional values on which this nation was founded and who brings a thoughtful understanding of how to apply them in our time. As I make this decision, I intend to consult with members of both parties across the political spectrum. And it is my hope that we can swear in our new Supreme Court justice in time for him or her to be seated by the first Monday in October when the court's new term begins. And with that, uh, I would like you to give Robert a tough time again. <laughs> I guess he wasn't in the mess today. <laughs> I have an announcement to make. I've been notified that Judge Souter is stepping down from the Supreme Court. I have the